Welcome to Walnut Creek Worship for November 28th. Why don't you please join us as we sing a great Christmas song this morning, a new fun one that I'm sure the kids will enjoy too as well. Born unto us this day a Savior Gifted from heaven to a manger The hope of the world alive for all mankind All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time So to worship. I'm Pastor Stacy, and I do want to share with you um, just a few things that are going on in the life of the church, things that you will want to know um, as we come up. The first of those is that our office is closed to the public until at least December 8th. We're doing that really um, to make sure that we're keeping you and our staff safe, and uh, so we're going to be closed through at least December 8th. We'll see how our numbers go, and we'll let you know if we're going to be closed any longer than that. But that doesn't mean our office our, our staff is not in and not working. It just means that we're not keeping our office open to the general public. We also want to let you know that we have a Christmas offering for um, children from our bishop that we collect each year, and we will be accepting that um, again this year. So there's some more information for you there on our bishop Christmas offering for children. Our um, greatest thing that we can tell you right now is you have a chance to actually come in person to worship. At least right now we do, and we have no plans to change that on September. Or September. Wow, I just took a jump back there, but let's try that again. So in December on the 20th and on the 24th, we will have worship in person. On December 20th, that worship will be here at 10 a.m., and on Thursday, December 24th, that will be an evening service at 7 p.m. The one thing you need to remember about that is that those are by reservation only. 
So if you plan to come on either Sunday, December 20th, or Thursday, December 24th, you will need to call the church office and make your reservation. And the sooner the better. We're going to cut off reservations December 17th. This is really to keep our numbers at an appropriate level, so we hope that you will honor that and make your RSVPs as soon as you are able. Let's see what else we have going on today. Oh, we want to make sure that you can share your prayer requests because as we are not worshiping in person, you can't really drop a card into a prayer box or walk up to the pastor and say, hey, Pastor Stacy, here's my prayer. So we are letting you know that you can share our church prayer request chain by going to email our church office or you can also call or text me and I will get those prayers where they need to be so that we can share them and get our prayer warriors coming around you. Now, Today is the day. You've already been dropped upon, right? At least I hope if you live locally, locally you have it in the best possible way. We had the great Advent porch drop. We dropped packages on the porches of all of our people last Sunday and Monday. And I think we have all of those delivered now. If you did not get a porch drop and you need some information, give the church office a call. But if you have received that, what you need to know is on Sunday, November 29th, is when your advent calendar and all the activities of your porch drop begin. So if you haven't opened it yet, you'll want to crack it open and look at that first stuff on top. If you have cracked it open, you'll want to find that advent calendar and find that information sheet for November 29th to I think December 2nd and figure out what you're going to do each day this week. So make sure that you check out your advent porch drop for this week. And then, last but absolutely not least, in fact, one of the most exciting things we do this Advent and Christmas season is we are able to adopt a Christmas family, or in this case, two Christmas families. They are two of our own families that support um, our community through uh, foster care. And so they are foster care families, and we want to support them in their ministry and in their loving on the children of our community. And so that information is there before you, and we hope that you will help us support our Christmas families this holiday season. These are the things that I have for you this morning. I hope that this time of worship will be a blessing to you as we share in this opening of the Advent season.
twinkling lights and candles everywhere remind us that Jesus is the light of the world that came to dispel the darkness. That theme of light is what originally gave birth to the Advent wreath hundreds of years ago in Germany. And it's become a beloved tradition in many churches and many homes today. The Advent wreath is one of the symbols that we claim as we celebrate the light of Christ. As we light our wreath each week, we will remember the fullness of God's light to the world in Christ Jesus. Today, we light our first candle, the candle of hope. We embrace the glimmer of hope that the first candle brings, moving us toward the wonder of God with us. Lord, may a glimmer of your hope shine. There's a wreath inside. Take a minute this week to decorate it with your family. It's in your bag because of Advent. As a family, take one of the candles from your bag, light it together, and put it on your wreath. I have a question for you. What does this wreath have to do with Jesus? This season, before we celebrate Jesus' birthday, is called Advent. And Advent means coming. God's people were waiting for a king. Not just any king, but a savior, the king of kings. They had some clues in the Old Testament about what this king would be like and ways they would know it was him. And they were eagerly watching and waiting for the promised king to come. So as we light each candle of our Advent wreath in the upcoming weeks and sing songs like, Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, God's people are singing, Come, oh come, Jesus, we are waiting for you. Take a minute to go get your wreath, your candle, just one candle, and turn off the lights. Think about the darkness as the world waited for the Savior. Light that first candle as a family 
know that we can't wait to see Jesus. Today, as we share in prayer, I want to remind you that we are praying for Dustin Davis's cousin with meningitis. I'm going to continue to lift that in prayer. We want to keep Bill and Sylvia Watson's great niece in our prayer after complications, after tonsillectomy. Um, Clint Whitney has a friend, Ron, who would like our prayers as he deals with um, some health challenges. We also want to continue to pray for those dealing with uh, COVID-19 and those that are working in healthcare at this time. And we want to ask um, for a restful Thanksgiving break for our educators and our school staff. And we want to continue to just give thanks to our God as we move from a season of thanksgiving and uh, recognizing the bounty of our Lord into a season um, of anticipation as we move into Advent. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks to you with grateful hearts for all that you have given, but mostly, Lord, for the love that you extend to us in the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit that we, Lord, are able by your faithfulness to overcome and to live and to love in Christ's name. And so, Lord, we give thanks to you. We offer our worship to you. We offer our prayers to you. We offer our hearts to you. And we give to you today those that we have named before you, Lord, whether it's in the generalities of educators and school staff or healthcare professionals or in the specifics of a cousin or a great niece or a dear friend. Lord, we give to you those that we know are in need of your care and need of your healing and in need of your encouragement and in need of your compassion and Lord we call on your name and we ask you not only to come into those situations but also to show us the path that we might take to enter into those spaces in your name. Lord God we come as your people and we say show us, show us the light of life. Show us the gift of promise. Show us, Lord, what it is to be your people, your faithful, those who are part of your plan, your wonderful, awesome, and faithful plan. Lord God, in your faithfulness and in our faithfulness, we come together and we bring to you the hopes and dreams, the concerns and cares, the promises of a people who love and give thanks to you. So Lord, receive our prayers in your abundance. Receive our prayers in your mercy and receive our prayers as we give them to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm reading Isaiah 61 through 3 and Isaiah 7, 14. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Therefore, 
the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Good day to you all. I'm Pastor Stacy Downing from Walnut Creek Church, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. Today, we are going to revisit wonder. That's what our Walnut Creek worship this Advent and Christmas season will be. We will revisit wonder. Now, having said that, you're probably thinking, I do not have time for more. Pastor Stacy, there's too much to do at the holiday season already. I don't want to revisit wonder, okay? Or I'd love to, but I'm too tired. Um, I am physically, emotionally, psychically, and spiritually drained. I'm too tired to go there to think about what's wonder and wonderful. Or you might be you might be one of those that is so used to uh, worship in scripture this time of year. You're going, yeah, yeah, angels in the sky, uh, dreams of the Messiah, trips to Bethlehem, born in the manger, baby. Yeah, got it, got it. I know these stories. Yeah, the wonders there. Mm-hmm. Wonder in those stories. Got it. But you see those things that you might be thinking, or maybe you're not at all. You're like, okay, I'd love to revisit wonder. That sounds like a great plan. I don't know. But the thing is. Or the exact point that I'm getting at is we spend a lot of time in December with the stuff we know, with the traditions we keep, with the ways we do things, and that scurry, that hustle bustle of the season. So what if we set aside what we know? What if we set aside the traditions that we keep? I know I'm meddling a little there, but what if we did? What if we stopped the way we do things and the hustle to get all of it done? What if this Advent season we revisited wonder? Hmm. Wonder. What if you took the time to just consider what is full of of wonder in the world around you. You see, revisiting wonder, it opens up a glimmer. It, it shows you a path. It gives you a song. It brings a surprise. It brings a savior. Revisiting wonder can bring all of those things to you. And that's exactly where we're going to go on our revisiting wonder this Advent and Christmas season. So we're going to start out today. We're going to talk about what it is to revisit a glimmer of hope as an act of wonder. So let me tell you about a glimmer of wonder and hope that I saw. About a year ago, this happened um, as we were getting my parents' Christmas tree together. It has been our tradition for many years that the Friday after Thanksgiving, we all kind of gather at my parents' house and we help them put up the Christmas tree. Um, part of this is because it's like a nine-foot tree, and part of this is because it's got all of those ornaments from years and years and years and years. And so it's like a walk down memory lane and a, and a remembering all these precious moments, and um, we, we do this together often. Now, this year we have not, and I suspect we won't, um, but it is a gift to us that we all get to kind of gather around. It's one of those traditions that we figured out how to let go of this year to, um, to set aside so that we can do other things. But I tell you this because last year, I think it was last year, as we were um, delivering or decorating the tree, I happened to glance back at the tree and this is what I saw. There was this brief moment where my children stood still. They were focused in the chaotic joy of getting ready for Christmas, of anticipating Christmas. They were focused on this moment as they decorated the tree. Now, if that isn't wonderful <laughs> in so many ways as a parent, I don't know what is. But in case that wasn't enough of a glimmer for you, 
Then let me tell you what happened next. Just a moment later, I turned to see this. I turned to see my nephew. And he's looking at the tree with that exact glimmer of wonder that I'm talking about. That moment, you know, that moment when you stop and you stare in the glory and in the beauty and in the hope of a moment. When anticipation becomes so real and the glimmer of wonder in that anticipation just gives you pause. this picture might remain my favorite Christmas picture for many years to come. It's just what I hope we recapture as we revisit wonder. Where do you find the glimmer of wonder? Especially right now as so many of your traditions are reworked or postponed or simply unavailable to you, where do you see those glimmers of wonder? Those moments when you stop and stare and the glory and take glory in the beauty and the hope of a moment. What are those moments for you that give you pause to go? This is where I think revisiting wonder is particularly important to us. For many of us, myself included, the pieces of the holiday that I love are the traditions, the new ones with our children and the old ones that we've had around since my grandparents, those things that we practice with family and friends, and usually not even in our own homes often. You see, traditions in seasons like 2020 can become weight that limit us. They can become burdens that overwhelm us. So we're going to look at our scriptures today and we're going to revisit a glimmer of hope. We're going to look at our scriptures today and we're going to see if we can figure out how to set down our traditions or redistribute the weight of our traditions so that the glimmer of hope, the wonder of God can shine through. Today we are talking about Isaiah chapter 60, and you heard that scripture just a little earlier. It's written by the people of God in exile. It's written by the prophet Isaiah in um, exile. What I mean by that is um, the people Israel have, uh, well, their kingdom has been overtaken, their temple has been overtaken, and they have been kicked out of the temple. And then they've been kicked out of their land. And then they've not only been kicked out of their land, but they've been told, you got to worship our king. Now, somehow they lived through all of that. They became slaves in some of that, but um, not all of them did. And uh, then they're all over the place. They're, they've, they're not only exiled, they're also separated from their place and separated from each other and separated from the traditions that have given them a spiritual foundation. So much of what the Israelite people were had become founded in the temple and being in Jerusalem and around Jerusalem and focused towards Jerusalem. And we are in a season where things are not going according to their plan or tradition. Things are not going um, for the Israelites the way that they would think is God's plan for them. And then in the midst of that, in the midst of this kind of devastating space, the prophet Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise, shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It's important for us to look beyond what we know, maybe of this scripture, and what we know of the stories that lead up to Christmas. It's important for us to look beyond what we expect in our Advent preparations and in our anticipations of what is to come. It's important for us to look into 
um, the reality of why these words of the prophet Isaiah are so valuable for us to revisit today. Because you see, God is giving them hope. A hope that shines through some of the most overwhelming circumstances that the Israelites have ever faced. Because God, it isn't that God says, oh, tomorrow it's going to all be back to normal. You're going to be in the temple. It's going to be great. It isn't that he says, oh, you're going to be the ruler of all people and everybody's going to get me and get you and it's going to be great. No. God says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. God says, there's a hope that shines because I've got a plan. God has put a plan in motion. That's what the prophet Isaiah is reminding them, that God has a plan in this. In fact, Isaiah 7, 14, that you've also heard today, says, Therefore, the Lord God's self will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Does that sound like a plan to you? That sounds like a plan to me. Therefore, the Lord God's self will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That is a plan. God has a plan in motion. This is why light is coming. This is why glory will rise upon you. And this is why all of that is full of wonder. Because exile, separation, even spiritual death is not in God's plan for those that seek God. Instead, God has a, a glimmer of hope through a story told in the birth of a child, in the coming of God with us, Emmanuel. God has a light that shines, a light that's not hidden, but one that is revealed, not even just to the Israelites, but to all the world. In these words from the prophet Isaiah, God is telling us that light is to overcome, and light to overcome is available to us. There is a glimmer of hope. That's what God is saying. Arise, shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God has a plan, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. But the plan God has for you, it isn't just God with a light. Because what was the first thing that was said? Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Hmm. Arise, shine. That's, those are commands to you and to me. The plan has for you, yes, is in motion. But it also asks you to take action, to arise and shine. That's right. God has the light, but you have to rise up. You have to stand up. You have to take action. That is the challenge to Isaiah's prophecy, to come into the glory, the glimmer, the hope. You have to arise and shine. You're like, great, more to do. But what does that mean? To arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen in you. Well, I ask you this. Look to the places that you see wonder. We've given you that Advent porch drop pack because we're trying to help you see some places with that calendar and some of those actions to, to experience glimmers of wonder, to revisit those places that hope shines you through for you and that hope shines through for those that you come in contact with. So look to those places of wonder, those places where hope shines through. Those are the places that you rise up. Those are the places you take your stand. Those are the places where action comes forth from you. Because in those spaces where that glimmer of hope speaks to you, the light of God becomes realized not just for you, but becomes a lamp on a stand, a, a beacon on a hill for others to see the glory of the Lord risen in you and risen for us all. So arise and shine. Take action. 
stand up, get a move on, so to speak. Because there are places for you to revisit the wonder of God, to focus on the glimmer of hope, and to become that which God has called you to be for the plan. Because remember, God's got a plan in motion. This is just one of the ways that God is reminding us that you are a part of his plan in motion. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is risen in you. Look for the glimmer. Look for the hope. And this, this will bring you a wonderful Advent season. Let's pray. Lord, your holy word reminds us that your glory is risen in us. Your glory is risen for us and your glory is risen through us. So Lord, give us the courage when we see that glimmer of hope. Give us the courage when we see that sparkling of your plan in motion to take pause, to claim wonder, and to let that light shine. Lord, hear our desires to pour our light, our lives, into your plan. In Jesus' name.
come let us adore him Christ the Worship is one of the greatest gifts that we give to our God, but our lives are the greatest worship offering that we can give each day. Go from 
this moment and worship as an offering of your love to our Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.